I just released a video a couple of days ago talking about my ideal perfect best controller. If you were to mix the shape and shell design of a Microsoft Xbox controller with virtually all the niceties of a PlayStation controller like its overclockability, gyro motion control, notably better quality control, four times longer warranty for the longest time, not anymore, it's a year now on both sides. Anywho, in that video, I got a couple of comments down there saying, you're basically describing the FlyDigi Apex 4, my friend, which thinking about it long, deep, girthy, and hard, you're absolutely correct, comrades. As of current, the Fly Digi Apex 4 in my book, which has short syllables and a lot of pretty pictures, very easy to follow along with, the Fly Digi Apex 4 is currently the best all-around controller, the easiest to recommend controller for the PC and Switch platform. Keep in mind, with converters or adapters, you can also use it on the Xbox Series unrestricted wirelessly and also to navigate the console and play PS4 games on a PS5. But that controller is so damned good, and I have gotten so much more stick time with it, learned more about it from diddling in the software, new features, tweaks that I didn't even know existed in my initial review, to where I knew it was my due duty to make a part two long-term follow-up review for this controller. It's the closest to the perfect gamepad that we can purchase currently. It ain't, it ain't perfect by any means. There's definitely some con shortcomings or areas of improvement for their next version, which will be pointed out here in this video. Without further ado, let's talk about the Apex 4, as it is the best all-around controller you can currently buy. Let's get it. So a quick disclaimer, this Apex 4 was sent for review about nine months ago for my initial review. So this is the same unit that I'm talking about here today. Thought I'd make a little disclaimer. Fly Digi did send this controller for review. They have no idea that I'm making this video. Just sharing some more of my thoughts. They don't get an early preview. I haven't been paid a single penny or told to say or not say anything about the controller. This is all my thoughts. A quick note before we get to rocking, rolling, and trolling. I have made three videos on this troller previously. It's the initial review from March 2nd. That is very long. Time scram time scramps, you little scamp you. Time stamps in the description so you can jump around. What's up? Then there was this part two, which was me correcting myself and doing a demonstration of the adaptive triggers. As in my initial review, I was saying, nah, brother, sister, it ain't really like the DualSense controller, which it is, but in a very few select titles. So a much smaller library than the PlayStation 5, where virtually any game that you play, even a third party like Call of Duty or Madden is going to have support for the adaptive triggers. As we're on the Apex side of the house, you do need to manually configure it and then launch it through the Fly Digi Space launcher in the adaptive trigger section and it is a little bit complicated, or there's a couple of steps, I should say. So these videos will be linked in the description below. This part two is going over the adaptive triggers. Then FlyDigi was kind enough to send out a couple of thumbstick modules, a K-Silver Blue, which is the most common Hall Effect thumbstick module amongst its competitors, and then the actual Apex 4 thumbstick modules, which are adjustable in tension. Another feature we're going to talk about because it is awesome. It is implemented so much better than the Elite Series 2, or definitely custom controllers where you can select increased or decreased tension in the builder. Now I want to quickly talk about price and where to purchase this controller. I have seen them as cheap as $80 through things like Wish and Alibaba, AliExpress, Bang Yourself Good with Bang Good, and some new in box fell off the truck, definitely not stolen specials on eBay. Uh, me personally, I don't recommend any of that bull schlaga that I just spit at you. I do personally recommend going through a reputable vendor like Amazon, where the recommended MSRP is $160 and has been since launch. That's actually all also correlates with the, whoop, not that one, with the, what the fuck? The Fly Digi website is just so silly to browse and always has been. Great controllers, terrible website layout. Hire somebody that knows WordPress or something. It's also really fucking slow or laggy. I have a gig down and look at this sucker just slowly fading in. Are you kidding me? But when you click on the Apex 4 controller, you would think it would take you to, come on, man. You would think it would take you to some kind of a landing page where you can get some additional information, the recommended MSRPs, tech specs. No, I did mention the website shitty and and I was correct in that. It just takes you to a link which used to be for the wrong controller. Whatever controller you would click on inevitably would take you to the wrong link on Amazon. That has
has since been changed. But what the hell is the Apex 4? It is the most expensive, best, most feature-rich, flagship, highest-end controller from Flydigi, which is known as China's number one controller company. And the key notable features of the Apex 4, there is a shitload, so I'm gonna rattle them off real quick, and then we're gonna touch on them in more detail later. You do have magnetic hull effect thumbstick modules, which are far less likely to develop stick drift. Those are also adjustable tension, and they do go extremely light where you could basically sneeze on them and it's registering all the way to an insane amount of strength or resistance. And this happens on the fly, although I do have a little problem with the fact you have to remove both of the thumbstick caps and the D-pad and the faceplate to get to the tool to adjust the thumbstick tension, which you're probably not going to do very often, but what I recommend you do if you don't care about your faceplate very much is taking a little Dremel or cutting wheel and slicing a small little slit in the side of the faceplate where you can remove and reinstall that tool without having to take off the faceplate. Although, keep in mind, you'd also have to drill holes where the flat tip tool actually goes to increase the tension of your thumbstick. So you need to cut a hole right here on the side and then drill here to make it work how it should out of the box to where you don't need to remove all that shit to adjust the thumbstick tension. You do have the force feedback triggers, which is a first in this controller. And if you're on the PC side of the house launching through the Fly Digi Space application, there is a select few amount of games that work identically to the PlayStation console where you have those adaptive triggers to get stiffer or lighter depending on the action on screen. But at all times, you can go into the onboard screen, which we'll talk about because it's a feature I honestly think should have been ditched, but you can go onto the onboard screen and you can adjust from three levels, well technically four because one's off, but three levels of trigger stoppage. Now I do still prefer having a physical lever because you can still force your way past the motor. What I mean is you pull the trigger and it has that trigger stop, but then you can squeeze past it and it's just going to push into the motor as opposed to an actual trigger locker stop system where if you do that, you're breaking something in the controller. But the cool thing is you can adjust those on the fly and in its stoppiest stop mode, it cuts out almost all of the trigger pull. Also, you have a thousand hertz pulling rate out of the box, which does give you just under one millisecond of input lag or delay. And the cool thing is that is both wired and wireless. Keep in mind, this does have three modes of connectivity, but if you want that speed, you're using the 2.4 gigahertz fly speed dongle, not Bluetooth. Then you have the screen, which does allow for uh, a decent amount of control. It is nowhere near as in-depth or as much customization as something like the Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra. And also cosmetically, the screen doesn't look that great. And there are several limitations. For example, you can't even actually turn the screen off. It's always going to have a static screensaver. So what I did is just uploaded a black, all black picture and use that as my screensaver. So it kind of looks like it's off, but you can't really turn that screen off. It's also very tiny. It says it's full color, but the only time you're going to see that is with the screensaver. Whenever you're browsing through the options, you're really only going to see white and blue. And I do think that the build costs from this one feature could have been reallocated towards better parts or components, which there already are fantastic parts or components with this controller, but maybe shave down the price to $120 on Amazon by not having that screen, which also is a huge fingerprint magnet and kind of works like a little makeup mirror kicking back your reflection at you in case you want to see how sexy you are when you're slapping them back to the lobby. You do also have a pretty goddamn good vibration suite. It is not haptic feedback and it's not standard rumble force. It's that middle way point, which is rumble plus motors, meaning they're still a counterweighted stack, just like typical rumble force motors, although they are a little bit more accurate, quieter, and are getting closer to the effects reproduced with haptics. Battery life wise is no slouch whatsoever as you have a 15 milliamp hour battery on board. You do have mechanical face buttons, which are the micro switch 2.0, which are deemed as being lighter and faster. Don't know about all that, but they do feel phenomenal. Cosmetically, I do think the controller is absolutely gorgeous, even with the RGB engage, which usually I have turned off to increase battery life, but I do think it is implemented very nicely on this controller, as RGB can look like a huge tacky sack of crap or look really visually pleasing. I think it's the latter on this one. You do have full control of the controller with the Fly Digi Space application, which is actually pretty gosh darn good. In fact, I would currently rate it in my top three controller programs, that being the Fly Digi Space, the Victrix Gambit application on both Xbox and PC is phenomenal, and I can't really think of the last one that I really like. I guess the B -B -B Elite Series 2 and DualSense Edge because they're integrated directly with their home consoles. There's other apps out there that aren't chunks of crap. The D-pad, I actually do like quite a darn bit. I do not like how far it sticks off the front faceplate. Fitment-wise, that's super weird. That literally just comes down to this plastic dish, which is a snap-on piece. You don't have an included swappable option. This is removable, so you can remove the front faceplate. But this is a omnidirectional D-pad, as you would expect. That means in every damn direction. And it is a mechanical switch, although it is one of 
one of those hybrid mechanical switches that really shoots itself in the foot because it completely negates all the perks or benefits of a mechanical switch, at least durability wise. This does have a 1 million click lifespan. That's super low for mechanical switches, usually 5, 10 million, but 3 on the razors, I believe it is. Not 1 million, probably has to do with the fact that there is a rubber or silicone pad in here, which are notorious for getting stuck in. Not too hard to tear down your controller and unstick them, but not a lot of gamers would like to do that. The face buttons, which I really like this diagram, sexy picture, and the specs look pretty good too. 0.3 millimeter enhanced trigger speed. If they could change that to actuation distance or button press, nobody's thinking face buttons when we see the word trigger. And then over here it is touting that there's 80 grams of actuation force, which I think strikes a good balance of resistance, so you're not getting false actuations, but also not so hard to press that you need to be a bodybuilder to play a game. They're using that micro switch, very typical of what you'd see with a keyboard, but on a much smaller scale. But then you have that rubber plunger mechanism or elastic wall silicone, as they like to call it here, which gives you that dampened sound and feel, but also shits on the durability. I personally don't like the feel of membrane buttons, especially in a premium or pro controller. Although I will say the buttons in the Apex 4 don't feel membrane at all. They definitely lean more on the side of feeling like a mechanical. So some of the things I don't like about this controller, one is going to be the inconvenience factor of linking it up with a converter or adapter because I frequently use this controller on my Xbox series. And unlike the Vader 3 Pro, which is very fast to throw into Bluetooth discoverable mode, this one, every single time that I want to pair up to a converter or adapter, it's recognized as a new Bluetooth device. So I have to go through the screen and navigate through two or three sub menus to select pair to a new device. And it says, OK, we're going to forget all your previous devices and look for new ones. Go in discoverable mode. And obviously navigating through a screen is going to be slower than holding down a combination of button presses on a controller. And the only controller that I still deem somewhat worthy of having a screen or like the screen isn't an absolute gimmicky feature and I think the build cost was well allocated by putting a screen on the sucker is the TB Stealth Ultra. Just because there's so much customization, it's high resolution, it turns off after a couple seconds to not distract you, it adds to the controller, it doesn't take away from it. The Apex 4, killer controller, I think that screen should be ditched. And in replacement, because you got that big open space now, how about a touchpad? That would make this controller a little bit more future-proof as PlayStation is now porting over a good portion of their exclusives to PC. They're going to be PS PC games through their launcher. So a touchpad would be very valuable for PlayStation exclusives where you might have a little swipey section where you're using it. Not to mention, you can also set up Windows functionality like turning on your room lights or switching through your song in Spotify. The gyro motion controls on the Apex and all fly digi controllers are good, although I will say it is much better on the PC side of the house. It seems like on Switch, I don't know if it's because it's a third party controller or what, but it doesn't seem quite as snappy and accurate as the Switch Pro controller, which I always think it's so stupid that they named it a Pro controller. It's not. It's your standard full size gamepad for your console. The included thumbstick options, quality and quantity wise, are not fantastic. The stock pre installed concave joints, grippy, feel good, but there should be different heights and definitely a domed option. It'd be cool to see some kind of an included carrying case for all of your loose accessories. Biggest things I dislike about this controller is the huge price fluctuation depending on where you buy it. If you're willing to wait three to five weeks with no customer support in place, then get it through Alibaba or something because you can get it for about 90 bucks. If you want to get it in two days and be able to return it if something's wrong with it or swap it out for a freshie, feel like you're not getting bent over a barrel with spyware, then check out Amazon where the recommended MSRP is 160 US dollars. And at that price, this competes extremely aggressively with every controller in that price point. Having said that, if you're still on a budget but want a killer gamepad that has the majority of the key features of the Apex 4, but at half the price, currently going for $80 on Amazon, then you already know that I'm going to recommend the Vader 3 Pro, which won my budget controller at last year's Gamer Heaven Controller and Real Game Awards, which is a distinct prestigious honor that it definitely earned. I still use that controller frequently. In fact, I uploaded a short form video recently about some rubber grips that I stuck on there that look and feel really good, but that controller is faster to pair up to my consoles when using converters and has pretty much all the core same features as the Apex, the Hall Effect thumbstick modules, although not adjustable tension. You don't have the digital adaptive triggers with the motors that are adjustable, but you do have actual trigger locks, which become a digital mouse click, which I prefer more. Cosmetically, uh, I think it's tied. They both look good, in my opinion. But the fact that almost all the 
controls of the Apex, like engaging turbo or macro, can be done directly on the Vader quicker by holding down a combination of button presses is a better method than having a screen. The Vader also has the additional C and Z buttons, which are pretty useful, especially on PC, because you can use a program like Rewaz to bind those to Windows specific functions. So tying everything together, as of now, the Apex 4 is the easiest to recommend controller in that $160 price point, just because it puts a tick in every pro controller box. It's got every feature that we like to see. There should be more swappable thumbstick cap options. I'd like to see a carrying case. Anything longer than the bare bones one year warranty would be fantastic. And the screen, it doesn't need to be here, but everything else about this controller is phenomenal. And looking back at the other day's video describing what in my mind would be the perfect controller, the Apex 4 definitely fits that bill the closest to any controller that is currently on the market. Having said that, I do not believe that the perfect controller exists. As I've pointed out, many cons or shortcomings, areas of improvement of the Apex 4, so it's not a perfect gamepad by any means, just the, the best one currently that I can recommend in that $160 price point. And there are controllers that I do like parts or components of more. There's rear buttons I like way more than any of the Fly Digi controllers. Keep in mind, they all use the exact same rear buttons. But overall, if we are looking at the general package, we're gonna grab this controller by the package. Give it a jerk. We should thank our fucking lucky stars this man is here. We should be on our hands and knees right now getting ready to suck this guy off, all right? Like this, okay? I wanna suck you off, Steve. It is a fantastic gamepad, and it deserves all the jerking and jacking that it's been receiving from my audience and from controller players on the internet. It is a f fantastic gamepad. It is linked in the description below, and I will see you st <laughs> Easy. Comment section. It is your turn to tell me what you think about this controller, and I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly wop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow tomorrow.